I have been convicted lately and inspired by the convictions of my brothers and sisters in Christ that I see trying to live out their faith and to be faithfully steadfast. Reading the Bible is important for so many reasons, and I wanted to dig into that as one of the one aspect of living more piously. Many people know they should be reading the Bible, but only have generic ideas about the why and the how. So it was something I was interested in exploring a bit. Reading the Bible and being inspired by the greatness and perfection of God was something that brought me back to Christianity after I'd left the church for over a decade. I've seen a resurgence in people desiring to read the Bible, and that's so encouraging. The Word of God is a powerful weapon. With just a little bit of effort, I think just about anyone can give their Bible reading some direction that will lead to encouragement and growth as the Holy Spirit works in their daily life, to help worship God more fully and to become more spiritually minded. Romans 8, 6, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Pray and reading the Bible are daily things we can do to cultivate spiritual minded living, or piety. This is a series of videos I wanted to start to make about how to practically develop piety in response to some reading of the Puritans I was doing. Piety is kind of a lost concept, but I think an important one to reclaim as we strive for reformation and revival within the church. This is a spiritual war, and right now the world is doing a great job of being pious with a secular worldview. They live and breathe their convictions, and we see the fruit of all of this in the death cult all around us. We despise God as a culture and reject Him with our worldviews. As Carl Truman and others are pointing out, the secular worldview is especially insidious and toxic. So so how is it that secular society is so good at living out their convictions and Christians seem to have such a hard time with it? They're constantly inundated and indoctrinated in secular worldview thinking, and it is our natural state to be carnal and, and sinfully minded. Piety is something that we should strive for as Christians. According to Webster's Dictionary, piety is acting in a way that's devoutly religious. But to the Puritans, this was about practically applying our faith and trying to be intentional about bringing Jesus into every aspect of our lives. Anyone who thinks this is extreme should just read Jesus' words on the subject. The Puritans didn't want to live hypocritically, and they took the commands of Jesus very seriously. We should strive to do the same. We can't integrate God's Word into our lives if we don't understand it. We can't understand it if we don't study it, and we can't study it if we aren't familiar with it. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, daily, what a daily Bible practice looks like and, and why we should do it. We're going to talk about how daily Bible reading helps us be more pious and why that even matters. We're going to talk a little bit about what we believe about the Bible as Protestants. Then we're going to talk about the difference between Bible study and Bible reading. At the end will be a section of ways I think that are, are really great to implement this and a couple ways in which, a couple things I think you should avoid. Why should we read the Bible every day? Deuteronomy 8.3 He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Jesus came to fulfill God's law and the prophets, which are the scriptures, God's word. So everything in the scripture was and will be fulfilled by Jesus. If we want to worship God truly, then we need to know how to do that, and God lets us know in the Bible. I really used to hate it when people would say the Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth, because it made the Bible seem so goofy, like some really goofy instruction manual. But it kind of is an instruction manual. I didn't realize that it's both a fascinating and awe-inspiring book that's also an instruction manual. In fact, the Bible's why I came back to Christianity, because I misunderstood a lot about what I had been taught growing up, but every time I went to the source, I saw truth and was refreshed. God loves stories, good stories, but those stories are so good because they point to truth and reiterate how God tells us is the best way to live. The Bible is truth. If you're a Christian, I think the case is very strong that the Bible should be the ultimate authority as the inerrant, infallible, and inspired Word of God. I'll cover more of this uh, in a bit, but really you only have a couple options as to what authority you're going to use when you're a Christian. Number one is yourself. You can believe that God reveals himself to you in a personal way. However, the Bible explicitly warns against this, and in my personal experience, I tend to agree that our own sin nature makes this pretty impossible. Second, the Church or the Pope. Catholics and Orthodox uphold the supremacy of the Church. I think this is not ideal for the same reason that using your own personal experience doesn't work. People are sinful. And number three is the Bible. The Bible is written by man, but inspired by God. God has revealed himself to us throughout history. And while the church and our own experience are definitely ways God reveals himself and works in the world, the scriptures are validated by Christ himself. So if we believe what he said, then we should trust the scriptures, which he said he came to fulfill. Ultimately, the Bible is a good standard of truth for us to hold the church and ourselves accountable to and measure ourselves against. If God is truth and Jesus is God, then we can take it to the bank that the scriptures are a reliable tool for us, given by God's providence, and that we can rely on them. So why piety? There's a lot of pressure on Christians these days to believe what they believe in a bubble. Politically, Christians are told to keep their beliefs next to their dusty Bible on the bedside table. If we don't want to do that, what we are talking about is a form of piety. It's kind of been lost to us because we've become utterly material 
in our thinking. And ironically, one of the people that made me so convinced to be reformed was Rob Bell, the heretical weirdo. And I know I'm going to get a bunch of garbage for this, but I'm very grateful for Rob Bell's books. I would not recommend them now, but they inspired me to wrestle with God again and help me realize two big things. First is there's no separation between our spiritual beliefs with our physical reality. Everything is spiritual because we were made by God to be spiritual. And the other is that the Bible is all inspiring, true, and stands up to study and hard questions. Something ironically we can use to call out false teaching like Rob Bell. <laughs> Pious living is a dedication to the electing grace of God, the dying love of Jesus Christ, and the applicatory work of the Holy Spirit. It's living out our faith and cultivating works in response to God's love for us and setting Christ as Lord over everything. Piety is bringing everything in our life together and acknowledging that Christ is Lord over it. Abraham Kuyper puts it this way, In the total expanse of human life, there's not a single square inch of which the Christ, who alone is sovereign, does not declare that this is mine. When you become a Protestant Christian, you accept the Bible as the authoritative source. Westminster and 1689 Baptist Confessions are, are good to look at to get in some more info on this. Protestants accept the Bible as the authoritative word of God that is inspired, inerrant, and infallible. The Westminster and 1689 Baptist Confessions touch on this, and I tend to heavily favor the Reformed side. The Confessions are great for understanding what the church has historically stood for and what some basic Orthodox beliefs are. I don't necessarily understand and agree with every sentence and paragraph in either confession, but they definitely give a tremendous starting point for studying and understanding different topics, including how we think about the Holy Scriptures. Side note, no creed but the Bible is in fact a creed, so that's nonsense. Creeds don't uh, encroach upon the authority of Scripture. They simply elucidate key points and doctrines in a more straightforward and digestible format. They're summary statements. They don't change the intent of God's Word. So when we say God's Word, we mean that it's inspired, as in God ensured that the words, structure, and language in the original Greek and Hebrew text was exactly what he wanted to be preserved as spoken by himself. That it's inerrant. That while humans are fallen and prone to mistakes, God ensured that the Bible is free from error and gives us what we need to understand salvation and the nature of God as revealed in Jesus Christ. And it's infallible. The Bible is sufficient to be used for God's intended purpose and his will down here on earth. Bible reading versus Bible study. So I used to work on aircraft, big old tanker jets, uh, KC-135 strato tankers. They're a complex piece of machinery. If a stranger came up to me while I was standing in front of one of those uh, bad boys and told me he wanted to study the KC-135 and asked me to show him where they were, uh, <laughs> I would say, sure, let me show you around. But I would not be letting him study it until he was familiar with it. You have to learn about the basics of something before you start to really study it. In fact, for a couple years while you learn to work on a jet, you're working with mentors so you don't mess it up. I know a lot of Christians who don't know the Bible in its entirety very well, but study it quite often. In fact, I did that myself for a very long time. Once I got familiar with the stories and the arc of the Bible, the meaning of the whole thing, then it started to make a lot more sense. So for our daily habit, I think most people need to start by just reading the Bible, not trying to study it right away. If you study the Bible right out of the gate, you might have a false sense of understanding and confidence in your biblical knowledge instead of the humility and respect for God's Word that you should have. It can lead to you taking verses out of context or misunderstanding sections of the Bible. You might even start to memorize scripture and apply it like a fortune cookie. For instance, a lot of people memorize James 1.5. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So this passage sounds like it's how you obtain wisdom, but that's out of context and not how we usually get wisdom. I mean, I've prayed for wisdom many times, and God gives wisdom for sure, but it's definitely, it's not like Neo in the Matrix where it just gets downloaded to your head on demand. Or Romans 8.27 that says that the Spirit intercedes for us uh, in prayer, but that isn't a general rule for how we should pray. So we need to understand the big picture and themes of the Bible to accurately study it and put the pieces together. Reading the Bible is about understanding the stories. When reading our Bibles, we should focus on learning and understanding the stories and letting them excite our curiosity and getting to know God. We need to read the Bible a few times just to get the basics down. It is a big book, definitely, but it's also not so big that you can't read it a couple times a year if you wanted. Early on, it's going to be way easier to find moral applications and anecdotal ways in which you can apply things from the Bible. I think that's a positive thing, as long as you take care to ensure that they're in line with good Christian doctrine. Reading the Bible is life-changing because it works on us over and over again over time. It's a weapon sharper than any double-edged sword. It's truth, and the more we understand it, the better prepared we are to face the father of lies, Satan. Once we get more familiar with the Bible, you'll naturally start to study it more and ask better questions anyway. You'll start to see how the entire thing comes together to give us a full picture of how we can worship God and God's intended plan for us in the world. So studying the Bible. Studying the Bible is a more systematic approach. Reading for me is pretty leisurely. And of course, you know, I like to read certain books more than others. Everyone has their favorites. 
but uh, within the Bible narrative books like Genesis, Exodus, and the Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's some of my favorites. We can read from Genesis through to Revelation, or there are tons of reading plans you can use to get through it in a year or less. Studying is looking more deeply at passages and seeing how they relate to the entire Bible, and then a applying them more directly to our lives. Like, what does it mean for us? It's also important to note that this is specifically what your preacher's doing. They're simply focusing in on what a passage says and trying to apply it specifically to the congregation. They're making it applicable and practical, which is ultimately what God is working through his church to do, to equip believers to spread Jesus in the gospel, bringing about the kingdom of heaven. So when uh, we start studying with a verse or a selection, we, we put it in context of the passage and then the chapter, then the book, then the entire Bible. After that, we reflect on what that means for our daily lives and what we believe and how we act. So it can be intimidating to think about doing that every single day. But just picking up your Bible and reading it, that's an easy way to get started. So why read and or study the Bible every day? Piety, the lost concept. If we're to bring God into every aspect of our lives, then we need to systematically submit to him. And that means orienting our lives in such a way that we're intentionally putting God first. Most people have no problem putting the idea of God that they have in their head first, but that's very rarely the God of the Bible. When we strive to put God first, there's a cost involved. There are commands to be followed. There are consequences, worthwhile, but often difficult consequences. So it's very important for us to have the right idea of God in our heads. If our goal is to live as a living sacrifice to the living God, then we need to understand who God is and what he commands us to do. Spoiler, that's all found in the Bible. How we posture ourselves before God and how we should posture ourselves before God. What it looks like to live for God. It's all in the Bible. In fact, to posture ourselves before God, I think reading the Bible is right up there with confessing sin and praying. Praying and confessing sin are the most important things you can do daily. Uh, daily is a good place to start with them, but even more regularly than that, if, you're exp you, if you need to. A very close second to that is reading the Bible. Reading the Bible will convict you of what you need to confess and help you see the world through a biblical lens instead of the, seeing the Bible through a worldly lens. If we wanna bring God into every aspect of our lives, we should start with going to the Bible to understand how to be obedient to him and why obedience is such a joyful thing to do. So now on to some things that don't count. The YouVersion daily app uh, devotional, please just steer away from those. In fact, a daily devotional is something different than reading your Bible. Many people count that as reading their Bible. I don't think it counts. Uh, this is right up there with listening to a sermon from a pastor. And again, I'm not saying that these are really bad, except for the YouVersion app, but I am saying that they don't count for reading your Bible. There's somebody pre-digesting that and, and then giving you their take on it. And those things are fine in and of themselves, but it doesn't replace just reading the Bible. Even if I put out awesome stuff every day about the Bible, which I have been, it still wouldn't count as your daily Bible reading. So ask God to speak to you through his scriptures and read a chapter or two. It's okay to open up the YouVersion Bible app and go in the Bible side and pick a chapter or two and just, and just read it, right? Or picking a Bible reading plan and going through it. But every day, you know, you should be opening God's word, whether that's in an app, but I tend to think, you know, just paper, normal Bibles uh, book, an actual physical book is the best way to do it. And my, it's just my two cents, opening it up, asking God to send the Holy Spirit for you to understand what's being said and just understanding it, uh, trying to wrestle with it yourself. I think that's the value in reading the Bible, trying to get more familiar with it, just being familiar with where things are at in the Bible, reading through from Genesis to Revelation, those different types of things. Again, the, devo the devotional thing, it, devotionals can be fine, but uh, they're going to lead you a certain way. And with daily Bible reading, I think the point really is just to read and enjoy and get to know God in a personal way, not filter through somebody else's lens. Just my two cents on how, you know, some tips on how to actually implement this in a, as a daily practice. But, uh, you know, in addition to that, after you read your Bible, after you confess sin and pray to God, I don't see anything wrong with doing a devotional, but I don't think, I think many people do that as the primary way in which they experience God every day. And uh, I, I think that's kind of down the priority list, actually. Again, those are my two cents. Helped me to be more spiritually minded. Um, as I've read the Bible, as I've prayed to God, as I've confessed sin, as I do those things, I feel myself really uh, able to feel more present with God and also really be encouraged to faithfully walk every day in obedience to him. 
I hope that's helpful. I hope there was something helpful in there. I will be praying for you. If you watch any video on my channel, if you, I, I pray, God, anybody that's watching, anybody that's subscribing to my channel, anybody that's on this journey with me, please help them to seek your face, to glorify you every day, to live faithfully and steadfastly in the world, and to bring Jesus into every aspect of their life. So that's what we're going for uh, here. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, with that, I will catch you in the next video. Peace.